Welcome everyone. Welcome to the Matter of the Heart. I am your host, Carol Olivia, and we're always so glad that you take the time out and listen to the Matter of the Heart. I'm curious, um, listeners, have any of you ever been to a hypnotist? And what does hypnotism mean to you? Is there a difference between hypnotism and hypnotherapy? Uh, what does it do to the body? Does it relax the body under hypnosis? Um, and how, what I'm fascinated with the power of the words, the power of the words that can actually shift energy in somebody. And what, how does it affect the consciousness or the subconscious? Well, we could go on and on with this. There is so much to, um, a beautiful art and science that I believe uh, Kevin originated in 1700s. Yes, yes. absolutely it did. Yep. So introducing Kevin Stone to the show, Master Hypnotist, internationally known, Hollywood, um, Hollywood Hypnotist. And I noticed that you have many CDs out and some of them are smoking, certainly stopping smoking, yes. weight loss, stress and i think you have one on self hypnosis yes yes so we welcome you to the show well thank you so much i'm so humbled to be here carol uh i love the title of the sh show it's exactly what uh holistic practitioners like myself uh want to plug into is the heart is the soul is to really just get people in alignment and in balance and I supply the tool. The tool I utilize, the modality, is hypnosis. And I'm curious about hypnosis. What fascinates me is the power of the words in hypnosis. Oh, yes. Because I was watching the video. Yes. Um, which is on, 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 his, uh, on his website, on your website. Um, yes. So what is it in the power of the words? Is it the tone, the, re the inflection? What is it in the power of the words? Yes, it is just words. And some, you know, the, the, the misnomer with people think is it's, uh, it's the tone, you have to be monotone, you have to do all of these particular things. That is not the case whatsoever. You see, all hypnosis is really self-hypnosis. And we are suggestible to everything that is happening. That is why, Carol, you're wearing that beautiful blouse you're wearing right now. Uh, you wear the, the, the makeup you wear, the jewelry you wear, because you're suggestible to the commercialism around you. And so that's how powerful words are. So the advertising media utilizes the power of suggestion, which are words, and the combination of words and how they're done. And that's how the mind is also programmed as well, which we're going to get into in this conversation. Yeah, that re re uh, I can't help but reflect on the making of the president. And that yes. in that book, they use the power of the words, you know. The oh, absolutely. And, and during Obama's administration, yeah, it was heavily uh, announced that he was utilizing techniques as NLP, Neuro Linguistic Programming, right. Right. Uh, power of suggestion, which is really hypnosis. And he was very uh, a good student at that. And that's how he delivered his speeches, his announcements. Very, very, very interesting. So is it, um, all right, so let's go back to the power of the words. What is it? What is it or how, how is it directed? In other words, if I come into your office. Yes. And I want to um, uh, relieve a uh, repressed emotion. Yes. Insecurity, anger. Mm -hmm. um, first of all, are you tapping intuitively? into that person when as they walk in i would say it depends on the hypnotherapist if they if they understand that principle then yes i know i utilize that absolute uh within the first i would say 10 seconds of a meeting just like you and i i'm already tapping into that to again gain that rapport and understand where you're at where your thinking is at and how you perceive the world right all right, so I'm going in and I want to deal with some type of emotion. Are you also working with the story of the person prior to, you know, to use? Absolutely. 
Yeah, there, again, we want to know all the details of why this behavior exists. Because again, all behavior is learned behavior. So what can be learned obviously can be unlearned. And so that's what the applications of hypnosis and hypnotherapy does. It taps into that most powerful part of the brain, the subconscious mind, which stores all of the information and releases the negative or replaces with positive. So it's basically <clears throat> tapping into the subconscious mind and then it's channeled into the conscious mind. That's correct. So if you can uh, visualize, can you visualize, Carol? Yeah. Can you imagine? And can you think? Well, I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> now those questions may seem silly, right, right. but some people don't have a yes answer to all of them. And that's okay. You would take everyone for where they're at and how they perceive and how they they, they, they contribute to the world. And so you've got all three. So there's other things going on with Carol that are very intuitive and very uh, therapeutic. And I'm sure there's other things that you do besides this radio show to help people achieve their goals in life. That already tells me that just in those three questions. And so if you can visualize, imagine, think about a circle, right? Yeah. And on that circle, I want you to draw a line to split it in half. Okay. So on the top part of this, what's that? horizontal yeah uh you, however you want to do it doesn't matter go ahead it's your circle right so on one part of the circle we'll call that the top okay of the top of the line so on the top of that part we're going to call that the conscious mind right okay which is a makeup of uh 12 percent of our brain's capacity you may hear numbers 90 10 they keep it simple in the medical field but it those are the, these are the accurate numbers that i'm giving you so that's 12 percent of your brain's capacity which is your conscious mind that line we drew a little bit earlier we're going to call that the critical factor we're going to talk about that in a little bit and then below that is your subconscious mind 88 percent of your brain's capacity so you can start to see where all of the power of your mind is, it's in that subconscious. So the information inside of there, Carol, is positive information or negative information. It does not matter to mind. Mind does not think for itself. And like I stated earlier, all behavior is learned behavior. So it's something that we picked up along the way. Now, back in the 50s, uh, maybe a little bit earlier, I might be a little off on the dates. However, there was a scientist, his name was Pavlov. You familiar with this man? Yeah, I, my name is yeah, and, and Pavlov's dog, right? Yeah. Which they, they wanted to understand human behavior through animal behavior. And of course, there's a lot of similarity with that. Well, Pavlov came up with this test. And again, I'm paraphrasing the entire thing. You can look it up on the internet and get more information on this. However, Pavlov basically trained the dog not to be hungry unless he rang the bell. Right. Okay? So then they, so through this testing, they came up with a magic number through science. And that magic number is 21. Once you establish something 21 times in a row, whether that be a good behavior or a bad behavior, it doesn't matter to mind, you're now automatically programmed to do that. So let's take, for instance, we have a smoking issue and you want to stop smoking. Well, most smokers would come into my office. I'll just give you an example. I did a, a lecture last week for a well-established corporate event. And the gentleman, which I didn't know until this was all over, was a 40-year smoker, two and a half packs a day, Camel non-filter, okay? One of the worst cigarettes you can smoke, no filter. And he became a non-smoker within my 20 minute lecture. Why? Because he allowed himself, number one, to be hypnotized. Number two, he allowed the suggestions to take effect and to reprogram that negative scripting that he had in his mind of what his mind knows to do. Right. And all I did was went into his subconscious because he allowed it and reprogrammed like a computer. So I took out the trash, replaced right. with the positive. So therefore, the behavior now does what we want it to do. Right. And in effect, Carol, I'll tell you this, and here's a big secret that people really don't understand. Right. I didn't do anything. I didn't do anything at all. Well, you were but, Yeah, I guided him to where he, he needed 
to go. And I gave him the tools right. to allow him to make the changes in his life. Right, right, interesting. So I'm thinking obviously one of the factors for somebody to, um, to go under hypnosis is that they have to be open to it. And or if somebody's yes. resistant to it, can that be effective as well? Yes and no. So let's answer the first question first, okay? Um, yes, you have to be open to the process uh, because if that wasn't the case, then I probably wouldn't be having this conversation with you, not, not because you're not a beautiful woman and this is a great uh, 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 format for this type of a talk, but I would have went to the bank today, Carol, hypnotize the tellers, drop all the money in my car and speed off and go home. And then I'd be, I'd be set for life, right? <laughs> so it doesn't really work that way. Okay. Right? So you have to allow it to actually happen. And here's the, here's the thing, like, I, like I'm gonna keep emphasizing probably throughout this entire interview, all hypnosis is self-hypnosis. We are in and out of hypnosis about a thousand times a day. The natural hypnosis that we can relate to would be driving down the freeway, the highway, minding your business, right? Listening to the radio, listening to this program, and your arms out the window, your hair is blowing in the wind, you're feeling good. And you realize you missed your exit. It was three exits back somewhere, right? Watching a good movie, reading a good book, childbirth, karate, all of these things are higher awareness, higher focused uh, places of being. That is a self-hypnotic state. That's how natural and organic this process is. My job as the hypnotist is to recreate this same sleep-like state. You're not asleep. Matter of fact, if you were asleep, it would be much more difficult to allow the suggestions to take place. So you're not in a sleep state. The appearance of it is you're sleeping, but you're not. But what is the difference between sleeping, uh, you know, the deeper sleeping, and yes. obviously there's no REMs going on, but you know, what? Right. Why do you call it a sleeping state? Well, because the appearance and the perception when somebody's in hypnosis appears to be that they're sleeping. Okay. That's, again, another misnomer that Hollywood and the movies project to be, right. you know, they sensationalize that end of it. But you're not, in a, you're not sleeping. I don't want you to sleep uh, when you're in hypnosis because, therefore, you're not receiving the proper information and the suggestions of the powerful words to facilitate the change. Okay, so, um, so I'm presume what you're saying is when you're in that sleeping state, you're going into the, the subconscious? Well, now, when you're, uh, well, were uh, you talking about a natural sleep state? When you're in the REM state, natural, natural. Yeah. Do do? natural sleep state. You're also going into that REM state. You see, remember that critical factor we talked about in that in that imaginary circle? That's when that critical factor opens up as well during your REM state, during your sleep state, and it floods your subconscious mind with all of the suggestions of those powerful words you've been listening to all day long into your subconscious mind. So yes, the programming is also working while you sleep. That's why you hear from time to time, don't ever watch the news before you go to sleep. Don't read anything negative before you go to sleep because your mind is gonna process that negative and guess what's going to happen? It's a repercussion to what's gonna happen when you wake up. Right. Because you're, right. You're, right. you're programming yourself for negative instead of positive. Right, no, that's very good, valuable information. Absolutely. Extremely. So uh, being, uh, going back to emotions with um, hypnotism. Yes. I'm just curious also, because to me this can cover everything. So, so somebody has an addiction like with opioids. Yes. Can that uh, actually? Uh, Absolute. Absolutely. That's actually something that I specialize. My specialty, as I progressed in my 20, I've been doing this for 25 years, right. uh, has become addiction and pain management, Oh, okay. specifically TMJ. Right. And I'm on staff at uh, White's Memorial here in Los Angeles, one of our very prestigious hospitals. Right. Um, and I facilitate hypnotic techniques to alleviate that pain. So with the opioids as well. And so, you know, you just have to think about and imagine whatever it is you want to achieve, hypnosis can be that tool 
to facilitate that change of what you want to do. Okay, so that's fascinating to me. So when you're working with somebody um, with an opioid um, issue, um, are you also tapping into their emotional aspect? Because it, to me, this is going to be some type of link with the emotional part as well or how are you going to it depends on the individual so more than likely yes because in a therapeutic situation those issues are going to come up so okay. you have to address them okay i you have to address them right and how does it affect you with uh, your practice does do you see you know i mean because you're doing all this work um, does it fulfill, does it fill the cup with water? Does it take some of the cup? Why, you know, how do you deal with it? Yeah, that's an excellent question. Wow. I don't think I've ever been asked that. And because that's, you see, Carol, that's telling me you're coming from a therapist background. So you understand. Yes, it can become very, very taxing. Therapeutic work with a therapist can become very, very taxing. And again, we're trained to, again, block the energy block what the issues are and really focus like like any doctor would on the the issue of what is happening and so it becomes a very seemingly sterile environment so there's a there's a balance in a therapy that has to happen because you want to have that relationship with your patient you want to let them know that you're there to help them to achieve their goals so in therapy it's a little bit different than a bedside manner for a, a medical doctor um, but very, very similar. What to your mentality, uh, Kevin, would you attribute to being a very good um, hypnotist? Oh, I would say the title of the show. Okay. You have to have in your spirit uh, a helping heart. You have to have a, a motivation and a passion to really help people help themselves. Yes. Yeah, no, I totally agree. I think any type of therapy, which I believe, you know, take it or leave it, is uh, to help the person heal themselves, follow the signs, synchronicity, you know, that the creator gives to one so that they can be their best healer, you know? Absolutely. And not to give away their power. Absolutely. That's absolutely accurate, Carol. Um, again, you have to know your role. You have to know your place and you have to have that connection with God to know what he's using you as an instrument for to facilitate that. And I think any good therapist knows it's not them doing the work. They're the guide. They're the facilitator guiding that individual where they need to go. And a good therapist understands that. Right. Well, I'm curious, uh, Mr. Kevin, can you give us a very uh, interesting story? that night you know uh, radiates from your your brain and your heart oh i'll give you i'll give you an experience right. that happened very early on in my career so i was a, I was a younger man <laughs> starting out and um i you have a great young spirit <laughs> thank you thank you carol um so i'll tell you a story about um a woman who who had heard about me at that time and at that time my career was just starting to take off with uh with a lot of the people that i uh, see now, which is celebrities, major sports figures, and that's what my work is known for. That's why I've become the Hollywood hypnotist, per se. And I didn't give myself that title. That was um, the TV show Access Hollywood. We had, uh, I was brought in, they had heard about one of the celebrities who I had helped, helped stop smoking. So they brought me in for an interview and we hypnotized some of their staff to stop smoking right there live. And what, of course, they did. I think the videos are all on my website if you want to check those out. But that's how I became the Hollywood hypnotist. But this woman had heard about me and she was from Connecticut. And she was a very, very wealthy woman. So, so she had no limitations in her resources. And so she had called me up and she said she had tremendous pain in her left shoulder. And she had heard about me and said, I was the one that was going to help her. She had been to every specialist in the world. She had traveled all over the country, all over the planet, went to every single person. No one could help her with her pain management. She said, I was the one. 
I said, okay, fine. So we set up some time, which was about four days because she had to fly in from Connecticut and she had to take some time. And she wanted to do this entire process through a past life regression. Oh, wow. Right. Yeah. Are you familiar with those? Yeah, definitely. Yes. Now, I'm not a advocate right. in past lives. Right. And I'll, I'll state that now. Um, but do they have some effect on the healing process? Absolute. So it doesn't matter what my personal stance is on these things. Because I'm an analytical, and for me, like when I when I really got into hypnosis, I want to see on paper the facts. I want to see the medical references. I want to know this is what's happening. That's just because of how I process information and how I think. So, right. Yeah, and analytical is just we want everything exact. Everything has to be pinpoint on on the money. Facts. Right. And so when it comes to past lives, again, I I. I respect people who do that work. I encourage that work. It's just not something that I, I became known for, but, here, but I actually have. And so this is why I'll continue my story. So it's not that I'm opposed to the work. I'll do the work if it's genuine and it's going to actually help the individual to where they want to go. Again, it has nothing to do with me. I'm going to do what I need to do to help that particular person to heal themselves. Right. That's what my role is. That's what my job is. So long story short, she tells me she wants to go through a past life regression because she believes that's when it happened. I said, okay, fine. So we take her into a hypnotic process. That is the, the doorway, the gateway uh, to get you into a past life. Get her into hypnosis, get her into a past life. Well, her story goes basically like this. She was traveling across the country to the wild, wild west before it was developed in a covered wagon. Well, halfway to midpoint, mid America at that time, a fight breaks out with the cowboys and the Indians. The Indians circle the wagons, everybody's circling and this fight breaks out. Well, a arrow with a flame, this is her story, All right. All pierces right. through the top of the covered wagon that she's cowering in the back with, Right. And it right. hits her right in the shoulder. Oh, Medical. Wow. Yeah. Okay. So she's got a flaming arrow in her shoulder. So medical technology at that time, Carol, she's not healing properly. She, right. she, there's, no, there's no process in the medical world to actually heal her properly. So this is what her mind believes, right? right. So right. during this past life regression, we went through the healing process and took her out of the hypnotic state and the past life regression. And lo and behold, what was the end result? You know the end of the story. Right. She miraculously healed. Isn't that now, did I do that? No. Did she do that? Yes. Because that was the information her mind held on to for all those years that that's what was happening. So therefore, what you think, right. what you believe is what you become. Right. Yeah. So that, so that was the root of it, that, that past life. That was the root. For her, that's what it was. Root. End of story. Now, can I, can I produce any factual evidence that this happened? Could she produce any fact? Could we go back and hit you know, history and, and create? There's nothing there. There's no information there. And this has been proven as well. Back in the 70s, it was a big push with trying to understand past life regressions when it became the the rage of everyone and everyone's doing it. Um, and they, they, there's no, nothing of proof. Nobody can prove anything that this actually, they came pretty close, um, uh, but there's nothing there. And so even with this particular case, it doesn't matter. And it's not important. What's important, Carol, is we used a system to help this person overcome her fears, the issues that were prohibiting her from releasing the pain after she had been to every specialist, every doctor, every amazing person in the world. She goes on every medication possible and it was as simple as what you talked about earlier, which is so brilliant of you, the power of words mm -hmm. and how we reformatted that subconscious mind at 88% to now think another way. So we just rewired the system. 
Well, that's uh, uh, yeah. Not that but it, it, to me, it's also opening up many doors. You know, in the medical field. In Correct. The medical field. In the, you know, it, I mean, it's um, opening up a huge amount of doors. Now that I think of it, that's yes, absolutely. That is really fascinating. Wow. Yes. Well, there's so much to this, uh, Kevin Stone. Oh, there is. There's so much, and we'd love to have you back um, talking about maybe just emotions, you know, how to uh, dig into the emotions, the trigger points of our journeys, because according to Kevin, we've learned that it's amazing, through hypnosis, um, we're digging into that subconscious or the conscious, but with words, power of words, and also relating to that, I, I'm also a writer, but power of words come from the heart. That's right. And I would presume they, uh, the power of the words that you are also working with, with a, with, a, with a client, I would think, I don't know, but the more heartfelt you are, maybe the more efficient the power of the words. Oh, I would agree. I would agree with that statement. Absolutely. That's what makes a good therapist. Okay. You know, it's like anybody in any profession. Once you understand all facets of your profession and you are that passionate about it, you can't help to be a contributor to what is happening to that person who walks into in, in front of you or oh, that person that God puts before you to handle their issues. Absolutely. Yeah, they're like messengers to uh, expand your own um, heart and you're yes. expanding their heart as well. Uh, and your soul. And their soul and certainly yes. their spirit to elevating their spirit, actually. Absolutely. Yeah, that's beautiful. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, this has been, uh, wow, Kevin Stone and the show is The Matter of the Heart. And I have been your host. And I would say, check out. Would you like to give out your website? Yeah, uh, my website's easy to remember. It is hypnotist.com, H Y P N O T I S T.com. And there's a lot of great educational information on that website to help understand self hypnosis, to understand hypnosis, to watch some video clips of people being in hypnosis. I do a lot of my work now, just like we're doing right here, Carol, remotely through the phone or through Skype, Zoom. And um, there's lots of videos on there. As you can see me doing the therapy, which is sometimes hard to, to get because again, all, you know, therapy is very, very private and it's not to be invasive, but because of the work that I do and television wants to do that, I get to have celebrities who go into hypnosis and I get the, they get the film and I get the film and it's all great. And so it's great stuff to watch. And you also on self, on self as well. Yes. Yes. You have a CD yep. on that? I have a CD on that to help you to guide you into the state so you can make the changes yourself without me or somebody else to facilitate that for you. Well, thank you again, uh, thank Kevin you, Carol. Stone, master hypnotist, Hollywood, yes. Hollywood hypnotist. <laughs> so we are grateful for the show. And I'm Carol Olivia. You've been listening to The Matter of the Heart. And I would say be kind to your heart, love your heart, open up your heart, and um, just walk freely with your life's journey. Thank you. Thank you, Carol. <laughs>